Hello, and welcome to another action-packed episode of Cheap and Cheerful. This week, featuring games with very little action. It's quote-unquote, walking simulators. Games whose physical interactivity doesn't go much beyond movement. Without really delving into the whole game-not-a-game debate, I'm going to be looking at Gone Home, Dear Esther, and two very short games that are packaged together, 30 Flights of Loving and Gravity Bone. First stop is Dear Esther, a game generally panned by the gaming community as being overly pretentious and a bit weird. Also very, very slow, but I'm getting ahead of myself. In Dear Esther, you find yourself on a dreary island, seemingly alone. As you slowly explore your surroundings, a disembodied voice relays fragments of a story. Unfortunately, this story is vague, disjointed, and intentionally obfuscated. You continue in this manner for some time, walking, finding landmarks, triggering exposition, and walking some more until it ends. At this point, I suspect many people uninstall and move on. I certainly did. But if the world, which is graphically quite pretty, and story appeal to you in some way, then that doesn't have to be the end. It turns out that there are a number of secrets hidden throughout the world, and there are more pieces of narration than audio cues. This means that each playthrough is slightly different and can shed more light on the story's true meaning. After a little research, it turns out that you can go pretty deep down the rabbit hole if you're so inclined. Personally, it was just too obscure and vague to be worth additional time to me, and honestly, I'm recommending a pass on this title to anyone on the fence. If you still want to play despite this, then do yourself a favor and search for info on increasing the walking speed, which will make at least one playthrough tolerable and cut the completion time well below an hour. I'll throw a link in the description to the tutorial I followed, if I can remember. Moving on to the one-two punch of Gravity Bone and 30 Flights of Loving. And if you thought Dear Esther was a bit odd, then buckle up because these two are a veritable buffet of odd. Featuring a simple, unique art style that is actually quite charming, these games quickly descend into madness. We're talking non-linear storytelling, obscure metaphors, hidden meaning, use of the fantastic, and some just plain weird stuff. I may be exaggerating a bit, but you're almost sure to make a couple of quizzical faces while playing. While mechanically linear, there is only one way to progress, these two step up the player involvement over Dear Esther by including actual interactivity for the player other than just movement. In fact, some parts even blur the line between genres, such as a short, simple platforming section that you can fail. That being said, these are definitely games for the sake of the experience and storytelling other than any sort of mechanic. As a fan of weird little experiences in gaming, I definitely enjoyed Gravity Bone and 30 Flights of Loving. They are short, no more than 30 minutes each, but given the bizarre and confusing nature of these titles, that's a good thing. Unlike Dear Esther, which suffers from its slow progression and just drags on, these two are very tightly paced with very little excess fat. They certainly aren't must-plays, but if given the chance, it's hard to regret the small amount of time spent. Wrapping things up is Gone Home, a very critically acclaimed title that generally is either loved or hated by those that have played it. In Gone Home, you play a young woman who returns to her family home after a long vacation. When no one picks you up from the airport or answers the door, you must explore the house to piece together the story of your missing family. This involves looking through drawers, picking up objects, finding ways to unlock the old house's many secrets, and generally taking in the atmosphere-heavy surroundings. It's this perfectly tuned atmosphere and terrific attention to detail that truly elevate Gone Home. In my review of Cairo, I said it was a masterclass in using atmosphere to tell a story. Well, Gone Home is the second, more subtle class in that series, using atmosphere to make your story engaging. The developer has managed to grab hold of something deep-seated in most of us and use it to add tension to the narrative, as well as subconsciously set your frame of mind in such a way that various moments can punch well above their weight. If you enjoy the occasional game that's about the experience, or are looking to be immersed and engaged, then Gone Home is near the pinnacle in those regards. If you are only looking for skill-based mechanics, or are unwilling to dig into the world presented, then save yourself the frustration and just take a flyer on this title. Although chances are you've already moved on after the intro, if that's the case. The story, viewed as a whole, is complete meaning no vague metaphors left to interpretation. This doesn't mean everyone won't come away with a different feeling or insight on the story, it just means that each plot, of which there are several intertwined, can be traced from beginning to end when you finish. All told, Gone Home is a narrative and emotional triumph that should give you several decent play sessions if you are invested in fully investigating the world 
and all the storylines. A quick recommendation from my experience, play this at night or in the evening when it's quiet and you won't be disturbed. The atmosphere doesn't technically need the help, but it's sort of like sprinkling bacon on top of literally any food. Unnecessary, but appreciated. I could prattle on about the merits and flaws of these games and this entire genre, really, and maybe I will sometime, but that's not why I'm here, so now let's wrap this thing up. Dear Esther was slow and vague, and I can't really recommend spending any time with it. 30 Flights of Loving and Gravity Bone are weird, but charming, and enjoyable enough if the price is right. Finally Gone Home is atmospheric and heartfelt, definitely a good use of your time. Those are some walking simulators, and this has been Cheap and Cheerful. If you have a theme you'd like to see in a future episode, post it in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching.